Okay, what strain of pigeons do you fly? Basically now, the Van der Weyer Vandalaws. Crosses. Van der Weyer, are they Herman based? Yes. It was Herman, Herman's son-in-law, wasn't it, Van der Weyer? That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, what kind of distances do you find the, the, the XL at? From, I should say, 100 miles to 500. They go right through. Is this straight or crossed or...? Well, they are crossed. The, the Van der Weyer Cox crossed with Van der Laar ends. Do you prefer long distance racing? Well, no, I don't really. I get fed up of waiting. Right. You know, uh, I do. I enjoy them if it's something like 10 hours. But yeah. if it gets over that, you know, I get fed up. So you prefer sprint the middle distance? Yes, I do, yeah. When you send your pigeons and in a matter of 10 minutes, you shut up. You know, right. and done with. Uh, what kind of distances do these pigeons excel at? Well, same as I say, they'll fly from 50 miles to 500. But uh, they like it better on the nose. You know, yeah. like three to four hundred mile on, you know, forty mile an hour days, they'll tumble in. What system do you fly them on? Widerhood. Widerhood. Total Widerhood. Nothing else? No, I, I do muck about with, last year I mucked about with six Widerhood M's. Yeah. And they flow very well. Was this jealousy or, or strictly Widerhood racing the ends of the cock? Well, there was my Widerhood M's, and I locked ah, them right. in, in my stock block place and locked them in the boxes. I had a pot of water and a pot of corn on and I used to train them three times a week and then on a Friday I used to show them to the, with the cops, send them to the race and then when they used to come back they used to trap, trap you know, to a widow's place. Yeah. And they flown very, very well. How did they compare with the cops? Well, sometimes they'd come with cops, I've had them come and win. You know, I've put them on first, first and the cops got second. Or They've come with cocks and I put cocks on first, you know, it's... Right. So that they're more than their own? Oh, yeah. I got first in the Northern Classic with two ends. On Woodhull? Yeah. Very good. Um, while on the, t on the subject of um, motivation techniques and feeding and whatever, um, what about young birds? How do you fly young birds? Oh, I love young bird racing. Yeah. Uh, I don't separate them. I pair the lone pair up, I breed early, I put them on the darkness and uh, I exercise and I train hard and uh, the youngsters respond to it very well, you know. While we're going on about training, um, back for one minute to the old bird racing, do you ever train you with hood cocks? First off of the season, that's all, four or five tosses. Is this while they're still sitting or? No, because I pair up in December. Right. And uh, I pair everything up my stock and my widow cocks and then I float my stock under me with the cocks for them to rear and then in January I park my youngsters and I park my ends and they don't get repaired and nothing then they straight onto Wither in January. So th once they're paired and split that's it they're not repaired yeah. again. No. And what's the reason for that? I can't see the point personally you know the pigeons once they've been parked and they're on my pigeons will rip skies out they fly for an hour an hour and a half two hours and uh, if you repair them, what does it do? It just stops them flying again, and you just like starting it fresh. There's no point. Does it motivate many more for, for showing them the ends on a Saturday from the race? Race is over. Uh, I show the ends to the cops every Friday before they go. Have they sat waiting for them on a Saturday? Yes, and they have an hour with them when they get back, or perhaps two hours. Right. Depends what sort of race has been. And what about feeding? Are they broken down? Breakdown feed? My feeding system is. When they come back Saturday, the purit purative's there for them. The purative? When I let them out Sunday, that depurative's taken away and we rode corns put in. They're in the upper, my pigeons are upper fed 365 days a year. Right. It's corn in front of the pigeons all the time. And then Wednesday, I keep topping the upper up, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, I empty the upper and I took it all into me, young, young birds, because it's Lots of peas and that left. Yeah. Then I'll put the full tin of widowed corn in the upper Wednesday. And then from Wednesday onwards, Wednesday morning, I'll put a tablespoonful of black rape um, and peanuts in the box, yeah. in the pots. Wednesday afternoon, I'll do exactly the same. Thursday morning, after they've had the exercise, they'll have a, t a t tablespoonful of black rape and peanuts. And then Thursday night, they'll have the same. Then Friday, I don't let them out. They'll have a tablespoonful of black ray pimp and peanuts, and then Friday afternoon they'll have another tablespoonful of black ray pimp and peanuts. 
and once they've gone Friday, I can get that hopper, but I've filled up Wednesday, I can pour it back into my tin, and if there's that much gone off the corn, that's as much as they've gone. That's for 20 cocks. And all they've done is pick the sweeties out. Right. You know, the safflower dairy. So you've adapted your own feeding method, wouldn't yeah. you, good? All my peas really eat from Wednesday onwards is black rape and, and peanuts. Right. That's different to, to a lot of systems we've heard. So they win well on it. They do win very well on it, yes. Let's go back now to the young bird. We've got a darkness loft set up. Yeah. What's the feeding regime? As much as they want morning and night. I, they, they basically say they have as much corn as they want in the morning after they've had the exercise and they'll have as much corn as they want at night. But once I start, as babies when I part them, I start them on peanuts. Straight away after they parted, yeah. they start eating peanuts. And my pigeons will kill you for peanuts. Yeah. And then once I start training, same system, but I put my peanuts in the blender and I chop them up for my youngsters. And I mix a t half a tin up of black rape and, and peanuts. And every time my youngsters go in the basket, when they come back, that's chucked straight in the shed. And they drop here and they run in the shed for it. Yeah. Because I had a chap come here once to watch him come. I think I'd top fed like six weeks on running. And I'd be taking for four or five in fed. Right. And uh, he'd come and he says, can I watch your youngsters come? This is when I was flying on the north a couple of years ago. And I says, yeah. And they came and I'd got this. And I chucked it in. And my pigeons dropped. And he says, that's all right. He said, but there'll be no good as old ones. I says, what? He says, you know, throwing that, he says, flying and tipped in. I said, no, I'm not. He says, well, are they running the shed? And I said, well, if I'm flying and tipped in, look here. And he looked in, and I got opposite. Yeah. I said, how can he fly and tipped in when you're hopper feeding? Because at that time, I was meeting a bloke in Clumber Park, and they was having 35 miles in the morning and 35 miles at night. These was the young birds? Young birds. So I couldn't get the feeding system, because it was like getting back about 11 o'clock from the morning toss. And they was going again at uh, half past one. So if I had fed them when they got back, they'd have still had been yeah, full of corn. Yeah. So if I, by putting hoppers in, only time they was full is at night time, they fill the suns up, yeah. you know, to go to roost. So you're a great believer in hopper feeding for all, for yeah. all systems. Yeah. It, it works for you. Pigeons fly. If they're not hungry, they'll fly. Right. Hungry pigeon won't fly. That's, that's a fair comment. Supplements, either on, on the corn, in the water, do you I'm use one thing, and uh, it's Colotone. I use that on Thursdays. I put Colotone in the water on Thursdays, nothing else. Right. Um, do you do like, we'll say, standard um, procedure for pigeon men? The worm them, cocky them, canker them? I don't worm them, and uh, I don't cocky. Right. I canker, I canker before pairing up, I shall canker them for a week, and then I shall put them on baitful for a week. Yeah. And then. When they've been paid up, once I've took my youngsters away, once I've got all my youngsters parted, what I want, I shall put those on baitle for seven days. And then a month before the racing starts, I shall put my widow cocks on 14 days of baitle. And that's it. No more treatment unless I get anything wrong with pigeons for the rest of the season. If you could just enlighten me, yeah, what are they put on the baitle for? What benefits does it give the pigeon? Well, if they haven't got any respiratory or any disease what you can't see, right? It, Clears it up. It's a widespread antibiotic, and uh, it's about the best on the market. And if they have got anything, you know, my pigeons perhaps have got nothing, but I'm making sure. Preventative. Yeah. Years ago, I used to use uh, vinate powder yeah. with cy cytokon. Cytokon. Cytokon on the corn with vinate powder, and I was winning left, right, centre with the pigeons yeah. using this. And you got that you didn't not use it, because they and uh, it got. We've got a few races to go and I'd run out to buy an eight. And I used to send eight for it. And uh, so by the time I've sent for a tin now, racing will be over. And then I've so I didn't use it for the last three races. And uh pigeons come just as well. So I've never used it since. <laughs> so it just cost me money for nothing. So you sent a few quid in the process. Yeah.